Hey everyone, it's your buddy Josh. Look, you all have been asking, I listened, and here it is. This is a compilation of three of my favorite weird shit stories. There's one about my wife, there is one about maybe the most scared I've ever been in my life, and one about one of the highest moments in my life. Honestly, it was not that easy to pick just three, but I think I picked the three best. But let's start with an unfortunate morning. This will give you a window into the world of what my wife has to deal with on a daily basis. Enjoy. We already have three kids, uh, um, and but she was talking to me about having another kid, and I was like, that, that sounds pretty fucking dumb. Um, <laughs> We have old kids, like, I'm not re-enlisting. You don't go back in for another 18. That's fucking dumb. That's really dumb. You know what I mean? Like, if I, I wouldn't know what to do with a fucking baby right now. Here's, what I, here's, my, here's my theory on babies. When you have, babies are like farts. Because you love your own. But if you had to sit in a car with somebody else's with the windows rolled up, you'd be like, I'm gonna fucking kill this motherfucker right now. <laughs> so, I, 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 but I told her, I was like, yeah, you wanna have a, 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 a you wanna have a, a, another kid? And she was like, yeah, she was like, but I need you to go to the uh, fertility clinic because I smoke a lot of weed. And she was like, you know, weed is really bad for your semen, which made me laugh when she told me because I was, I was pretty fucking high. And, uh, <laughs> I was just picturing my sperm swimming around inside of her, like Cheech and Chong. <laughs> like, oh, no, I'm not gonna swim up there, man. I'm gonna hang down here on the walls. Like, I was like, yeah, I'll go. Has anybody in here been to a fertility clinic? Just me and my old balls? Okay, here we go. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something right now. There are some awkward situations you find yourself in. I've never found myself in a more awkward situation than being in the lobby at the jerk-off doctor's office. Because look, you're sitting in a lobby with seven dudes, all strangers, but everybody knows that everybody's just waiting to go jerk off. It's bizarre! There's no eye contact. Some dude tried to shake my hand, and I was like, fuck you, we are not shaking hands. And look, there are some times in my life where it's nice to be recognized, and there are some places where I don't want to be recognized. Like the jerk-off doctor's office. And, and let me tell you why the jerk-off doctor's office is so weird in the lobby. Look, it's not a secret. We all know we all masturbate. That's not a secret. But you, but you don't call your shot. You don't announce it to other people. Do you know what I mean? It's not like the game Clue where you're like, it's Josh in the living room with a sock. Do you know what I mean? Like... We've got, a little more <laughs> We've got a little more decorum than that, you know what I mean? So I'm trying not to make eye contact and I can just feel this dude staring at me, just. And I turned to him and he goes, oh, I know you. And I said, no, you don't. And he goes, no, 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 I know you. What's your name again? And just then from behind the counter, the woman, she said, uh, you, Mr. Comedian, you want to come on up here and fill out your paperwork? And I was like, Okay. So I walk up there. Now, I know none of you have ever been to a fertility clinic, but let me tell you, there are two questions on the paperwork that, I w I, that stumped me. Question number one. How do you plan on making your deposit today? <laughs> Masturbation or other? And I was like, well, I got a fucking question right now. <laughs> I said, what's other? And she goes, do you plan on masturbating? I go, well, it kind of depends on what other is, doesn't it? <laughs> because if you're sending in Nurse Other, I'll check that box right now. <laughs> she was like, I can't tell you what it is. I go, are you telling me there's, a, there's, a, there's an alternative to masturbation that's so good you haven't even fucking named it yet? <laughs> you're not gonna tell us what it is? She goes, I really can't. I'm like, oh, okay. She goes, maybe I can tell you later. I go, okay. The next question that stumped me, stumped me. How much do you plan on depositing today? I don't know. I don't jerk off in a measuring cup in my house. I'm not all of it. I'm not going to be in the other room like this. I don't 
don't jerk off. I don't jerk off. I'm not like, I got a teaspoon and a half today. I have fucking all of it. I don't need a doggy bag, all of it. You know what I mean? Whatever. And she was like, go sit down. I'm like, fucking fine. I walk into the lobby and the dude was like, hey man. I go, no. A couple minutes later, she goes, it's your turn. I go, okay. I go into the room and I walk into this room and right away, guys, I know, oh, there's no way I can masturbate in there. It was a testament. That room was a testament to how gross dudes are. Let me tell you how gross dudes are. The couch that I was supposed to sit on, covered in plastic, which means they had washed it so many times that the dude was like, mm, you just gotta fucking wrap that up. <laughs> the, the remote control that I was supposed to hold, covered in plastic. I'm gonna go one step further on how gross dudes are. The front of the television was covered in plastic? That means some dude jerked off on the TV. He was like, I don't want kids. Sorry about that. I <laughs> I was aiming at you though, so you know, okay. <laughs> so I was like, man, I, 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 uh, I don't want to touch anything in here. But I knew how important it was to my wife. So I was like, okay. And then I remembered her telling me that when she's in a place in a bathroom that's dirty, that she doesn't want to sit on the toilet, she hovers. Right? You all hover over the seat. So I was like, oh, I'll just, I'll hover jerk. <laughs> So I get to right here, and I'm, I'm masturbating, and I'm about 20 seconds in, and I was like, my fucking quads are burning, right? I was sweating profusely. I'm like, fuck CrossFit. This is the best workout I've ever had in my entire life. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fucking open up a hover jerk studio and close down CrossFit, like, right now. I'm sweating. I'm cramping, cramping, and I'm like, I need some water, right? So I start to walk out to the front, and I'm sweating. Guys, I'm breathing heavy, I'm cramping, so I'm limping, sweat dripping off my face, and I'm walking out to the front like some weird survivor. I'm like, ah, ah, ah. and the woman was like, are you okay? And I said, uh, I think I'm gonna need to know what other is. <laughs> she said, I can't tell you that, but I get your water. I go, okay. I drink the water, I go back in the room, I finish up, I come out, I go to fill up my paperwork so I can get out of there, and the dude who recognized me in the lobby comes up and he stands this far away from me. And he goes, I know who you are, Mr. Comedian. And I go, oh, well. Nice to meet you, man. He goes, yeah. He goes, well, wait till I tell my wife you were here. I go, what? And he goes, yeah, yeah. I go, do you feel like you really need to do that? And he was like, yeah, she's a big fan, man. She's a big fan. I just got to tell her. And I go, okay, that's fine. And he goes, yeah. And then he goes, can you fill this out for her? And I go, sure. And he goes, can you sign it? Make it funny. Something about being in the jerk-off doctor's office. I'm like... <laughs> So I'm starting to fill it out, and he looks at me, and he goes, he goes, uh, I saw you walk out of there all sweaty. He, he goes, what was happening in there? And then I said, you should definitely check other. And he goes, oh, okay. And then he goes to me, he goes, oh, wait, I, I can't wait to tweet about this. I go, no, dude, you can't tweet about it. And he goes, why not? I go, because we live in a country of stories. You don't remember facts, you remember stories. When you think of Charlie Sheen, you don't think of Platoon, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Dude's had a bunch of hits. You know what you think of? Hookers and crack. Because we remember stories, and I don't want to be sweaty jerk-off guy for the rest of my fucking life. You know what I mean? So I go, dude, don't tweet. He goes, I'm going to have to tweet, man. I'm so sorry, but I'm going to get so many followers when I tell people you were here. And I was like, fuck. And I'm about to sign my name. And he goes, oh, 
wait till I tell everybody that I met Dane Cook. And I was like, Dane. <laughs> Walked out of there feeling pretty fucking good about myself. I'm not going to lie to Look, for you guys watching, don't judge me. I don't get 10 minutes by myself very often, everybody. Hey, I know you're judging me. I know you are. If you know you got 15, 20 minutes by yourself, none of your, no kids in the house, no wife, that's when it happens. And it's the best. This next clip is easily the most scared I've ever been in my life for a prolonged period of time. Now, I've had people jump out of bushes and scare me where I thought my insides were going to drop out of my pee hole. This was just one long butt clench. You know what I mean? Gah! I hope you can hear it and feel it and see it on my face. I'm, I sweat when I tell the story. The most scared I've ever been. Enjoy that. I'm in New Zealand. My biggest fear for your heights. They have one of those giant space needles. And I was like, I'm going to jump off that needle. And my buddy Heath, who was showing me around, I go, Heath, I'm jumping off that needle. He was like, I'll go with you. Fucking great. So we go down there, and I walk into the office, and I ask the woman, I go, what's the deal? She goes, okay, it's 700 feet straight up, 16 second fall, and then it's over. I was like, it's over? <laughs> and she said, the jump is over. I go, that's what, you, that's what you should say. You should say the jump is over. I just shit a little bit for no reason, you know what I mean? <laughs> I said, what, what's the deal? I'd like to see someone jump. When, when's that going to happen? She said, half hour. You want to wait? Scared of heights, people. You know what we're not doing? Standing next to that fucking needle for 30 minutes. No way, because then I'm never gonna jump, right? I just need to, it needs to be a last second. I go under, I go, no, no, I'll come back. And she said, okay. But I left, dude, with every intention of never coming back. But the truth of the matter is, the only reason I didn't just flat out not go back, I didn't want to come up with the reason not to jump, because I felt like that would make me a pussy. But if somebody else came up with the idea, I could just go, yeah, you're probably right. I probably shouldn't jump, right? And who's gonna give me that idea? My wife. I call her on the phone. I go, hey, babe. She goes, hey. She said, you near that needle? I said, I am. And before I could say anything else, she said, hey, please don't puss out. <laughs> and I said, what? She goes, I know you're calling me. So I'll give you a reason not to jump. I'm, I'm not gonna do that. And she said, I know you, and I know the only way you get disappointed in yourself, and this is true, is when you don't try. When you feel like you quit, and you hold on to that shit for a long time. And she said, I don't want that to happen to you. I don't want you to hang on to this for months. So please, just jump. And I told her, I go, babe, thank you very much. It's cool to be married to somebody who knows me so well, so I appreciate you looking out for me. And she said, I, I didn't tell you that for you. <laughs> I said, what? She goes, you know, when you hang on to it, you know what you do? Talk about it all the time. She goes, I don't want to hear you for the next three months. I should have jumped, you know, I should have jumped. I should have jumped, you know, I should have jumped. She said, so just jump. And I go, okay. And I hang up the phone. And guys, here's how you know I'm scared. When, when you see me super confident, extra bravado, I'm frightened. That's how, like, I, that's what my alter ego is for my fear. This is how scared I was. This is how much bravado I had. When I hung up the phone, I turned to my friend Heath, and I think I said something like, Hey! Let's go fuck that needle in the ass! <laughs> scared, right? But I was full of bravado. I go, hey, you want to fuck it? Hey, Heath, you want to fuck it? Nah. And I hope I wasn't doing this. I go, hey, he, you want to fucking jump with me? And he was like, no. <laughs> I said, why not? And he goes, well, for 16 seconds, your body's going to feel like it's dying, right? I said, yeah. He goes, yeah, that sounds terrible. <laughs> I don't want to do that. He said, but I'll be sitting right there, drinking a beer, smoking a joint, waiting for you. I said, OK. So I start to walk under the needle. And here's what I decide. Fuck the bravado. What I decided in that moment was, bravado was me pretending to be somebody else. And in order for me to conquer this fear, I want to do it as me. So I'm just going to embrace this fear and see what happens, you know? And as soon as I let go of the bravado, one thing I did learn about myself is when I'm super scared, guys, my lower body sweats a lot. <laughs> a lot. Like, 
a lot, a lot, right? And so I was like, this is really a weird feeling, you know? But, I, but it actually felt good. I felt a lot, like present. I felt there. And I was like, fuck it. And nobody knows me in New Zealand. I'll be just some scared, sweaty American. They're gonna fucking love that, right? So fine, just embrace this, get up there, conquer this fear, check this box, and let's move on to the next one. No one knows you here. You should feel the most comfortable. And I just hand this dude my ticket, and he goes, Josh Wolf. <laughs> and I looked at him, and I go, are you sure? And he said, are you not sure? I said, no, I'm sure. I said, how do you know me, man? He goes, I was at the comedy festival last night, dude. You're the whole reason I went. You're my favorite comic. I actually told everybody here about you. They're going to be so psyched to meet you. Hold on one second. Hey, everybody, hey, hey, hey. That guy, Josh Wolf. And they make a semicircle around me, right? Now, here's something you guys need to know about me. When I'm out in public and I'm nervous and I don't know what to do with my hands, I do this on my nipples. <laughs> So there's like 50 pictures of me with these people, like, hey, hey, right? By the way, side note, side note, probably about three or four times a year, I like to go to the casinos, take some mushrooms, and play the slots. And, and I'll tell you why, dude, it's just the simulation. The ding, 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 right? And not too long ago, I was at the Mohegan Sun, which is a casino in Connecticut. Woo! And I was, dude, I was like 3.30 in the morning. I was on mushrooms. When I'm on mushrooms, I rub my nipples too. <laughs> but not because I'm nervous, just because it fucking feels good. Uh, <laughs> and so I was playing slots and I, I hit like a $500 jackpot. It was fucking ring, 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 ring. It's crazy, you know? And there was a dude sitting next to me and I didn't notice he was there. And at one point he looks at me and he goes, hey. And I go, yeah. <laughs> And he goes, he goes, you, you rub your nipples for good luck? I mean, what am I gonna do, say no? I, I, I. So I said, yeah. So me and this dude sat next to each other. <laughs> fucking rubbed our nipples like, yeah! At one point he was like, it's not working. I'm like, you gotta rub them harder. He's like, no. <laughs> Okay. So, they're gonna make a little circle around me, and, and the people there know I'm a comedian, and they know I'm scared, and, and they're making some jokes, and I don't mind that shit, you know? And the guy standing next to me goes, all right, everybody, enough of the jokes. Time to say goodbye to Josh. And I was like, <laughs> goodbye. And he was like, it's just a saying. I go, fucking change it. <laughs> and he puts me in my little one suit, in my onesie, in my, in my jumpsuit, you know? And, uh, and he put a harness on me real loose, and he puts me in this elevator. And he goes, here you go. This elevator is gonna take you 700 feet very slowly straight to the top. And the doors start to shut. And I go, well, aren't you getting in? He goes, no, just you. <laughs> elevator slowly rises out of the ground. And as it does, I look around and I realize that this elevator is like 80% glass. I don't like the window open on the fucking airplane, everybody. <laughs> but 80% glass, you know what that means, right? 20% wall. So I'm not kidding. When it lifted out of the ground, I turned around and I fucking Blair Witched myself right against the wall. I just sat like this. I put my face against the wall. I closed my eyes and I was like, this is it right here. I'm just threading this right here. And guys, I was like 75% sure I was gonna die. So I started talking to people in the elevator who I wanted them to hear from me one last time. Like I was talking to my parents like, mom and dad, thank you for always believing in me. Beth, you're the best decision I ever made. And Jacob and Caitlin and Trevor, you're my three heartbeats. How do I know I was screaming all of those embarrassing things? Well, apparently they videotape you. <laughs> right when you walk in the elevator. Oh, a heads up would have been nice. A sign, smile, you're on camera, something. You know what it is? It's just a video of me screaming the bitchiest bitch shit any human has ever screamed. I was screaming things like, guys, I am on tape screaming this. If it's my time to go, I'm ready, but I'm not ready! <laughs> so 
So we get to the top, right? I get to the top, and the door opens. And at the top were these two young ladies. And one was this sarcastic, biting, say anything to your face, I don't give a shit about your feelings kind of person. And the other woman was exactly the same. <laughs> and I get up there, right? And they started laying into me immediately. The door opens and I just hear one of them go, well, come on out here, princess. And I walk up to the desk, and she hands me a clipboard. And she goes, here you go. I go, what's this? She goes, I need you to fill out this waiver. I was like, waiver? I said, what's this waiver for? And she said, you know what the waiver's for. And I was like, ha ha ha! I said, has anyone ever, has anyone ever had to use the waiver? She said, no. I said, well, that's good. She said, yeah. But their families did. What? Oh, she was fucking with me so hard. I appreciated it, but it was scary, you know? She goes, head out there. They're waiting for you. And I walk out on the deck. Now, has anyone in here ever been on top of one of the needles? The Strat in Vegas? Or... Oh, yeah, yeah. Did, you, did, it, did anyone jump? Nope. You jumped? No, I cried. Yeah, you go. So... <laughs> and did you? Skydive. You skydived? You skydived? Yeah, nah. <laughs> I will tell you, first of all, guys, one thing that, and anybody who's been on top of these needles will tell you, from the ground looking up, from the middle to the edge, looks huge. When you get up there, it's 15 feet max. And at the Strat, just like all these places, there's a railing that you would hold and you walk out to the edge, which is what I'm sure most normal people do. <laughs> Not your boy. I was so scared, guys. I'm 15 feet from the edge. Right when I get out there, I grab the railing with both hands like this. I'm squeezing it, white knuckling it, and I'm doing this with my feet. This feels safe, this is safe. This feels safe, this is safe, this feels safe. How do I know I was saying that? Oh, they videotaped that part too, that's right. I'm up there fucking safe, fucking safe, safe, fucking safe, safe. Guys, can I tell you something? When I finally got down to the ground, the woman who sold me the tickets, she walks up to me and she goes, hey. I go, yeah. She goes, you want that video? I said, yeah, I want the video. She goes, okay. I hope you got a lot of room on your phone. I go, well, what? And she goes, well, what's the longest video I've ever had to send anybody? I go, well, how long's the average video? She goes, five and a half minutes. I go, well, how long was I up there? She said, 37 minutes. <laughs> I said, no way. She goes, yeah, you did safe, safe for 17 minutes. Fuck it, safe, fuck it, safe, fuck it, safe, safe, fuck it, safe, safe. Were they watching in real time? How humiliating. I'm up there, fuck it, safe, fuck it, safe, safe. They're in the office like, ah, fuck it, safe, safe, fuck it, safe. And by the way, guys, there are two groups that they let up on that needle. The jumping group. The other group, they will let you do two things. They will let you walk along the edge by yourself. They say that cures your fear of heights. No, hey, fuck you. That's right. You know what else they'll do, dude? Ready for this? They'll attach a hook to your onesie, your jumpsuit, and they will hang you off the side. So you're flat looking down. Yo, dude, this guy walks up to me and he goes, hey, you want me to hang you off the side? And I was like, do you want me to shit in your mouth? Oh, I will shit up. I will beat gravity. Are you fucking kidding me right now? Have you not fucking say, fucking say, say, say. Read the room, bro. No, I do not want you to hang me off the side of this needle. I'm just trying to keep my shit together right now. You know what I mean? So the woman, the woman who was in charge of, you know, getting me off there, she goes, all right, come on, you gotta jump. I've been up there for at least 17 minutes. She was so sick of me at this point in time. 
She goes, come on, you gotta jump off of here. There's a line of people waiting to get up here, come on. And I go, well, what happens if I don't jump? She goes, what do you mean? I go, what happens if I get in that elevator, I ride it straight down, and just nobody ever knows? She goes, well, I mean, if you did that, somebody might tweet about it. I said, are you telling me that if I don't jump off this needle, you're gonna tweet about it? She goes, no, I wouldn't. I think Twitter's stupid. I, I really think it's really dumb. I said, thank you. She said, of course. But she would, and her friend was like, I said, can you help me? I'm just so scared. She goes, do you not? Will you let me do my job? She said, do you think you're the first grown man I've had to talk off of this needle? <laughs> you're not. She goes, let me ask you a couple questions. Have you Googled us? I said, of course. She goes, this is your biggest fear? I said, it is. She goes, right. She said, when you Googled us, did you find anyone ever died here? I said, no. She goes, yeah. Has anyone ever been injured here? I said, no. She said, that's right. You are quite literally scared of nothing. You're making things up to be scared of. Instead of making things up, let me just give you the facts. We've been here for years. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people jump off here every year. And nobody ever even gets hurt. We change lives. She goes, let me tell you something right now. When you jump off here, when you hit the ground, I go, hit the ground? <laughs> She was like, you know what I'm talking about. I said, I know you need to work on your messaging. That's what I know. <laughs> she said, you're gonna be a new person. You ready to be a new person? And I said, uh, no. <laughs> that's your pep talk? New person is your halftime speech? I go, that's not working for me. What else you got? She goes, okay. I was just throwing that one out. I got a couple more. She said, you got kids? I said, yeah. She goes, your kids know you're here? I said, yeah. She goes, you want to disappoint your kids? I said, I disappoint my kids all the time. What else? <laughs> Go fish. That shit doesn't work on me either. What else? <laughs> she said, all right. Your kids know you're scared? I said, of course. And she said, do you want your kids to know that it's okay to quit in life when they're scared? Yes. And I was like, oh, I want to fucking push you off here so <laughs> I was like, no, I don't want that. She said, of course you don't. She said, get up there. And I get up to the edge. And I stand there. And guess what, scared of heights people? It's not real until you hear your very first <laughs> And my man, that is followed quickly by boom, boom. <laughs> And she <laughs> tightened up my harness. Tight! I'm not gonna lie to you, she squished my left nut. And on a normal day, I'd have told her to loosen that up. But looking 700 feet straight down, I'll be all one nut Josh. I don't give a shit. It's better than being all dead Josh. That's what I'll tell you what right now. And what a great story to tell your grandkids. Hey, how'd you lose, how'd you lose your nut, Pop Pop? It exploded in midair, kids, you know? So I'm standing there, and something happened to me that I'd only heard about. You guys heard the term frozen with fear? I didn't think that was a real thing until I couldn't move my fucking body. And I just had to tell her. I said, listen, I want to tell you something for real. No fucking around. I have to do this today. This is why I'm here. I cannot let my fear beat me today. Of course I don't want to disappoint my kids, but the real reason I'm here is she's right. I grew up with a lot of irrational fears. And I promised myself I would not hang those, hand those down to my kids. And the only way for me not to hand this down is to do this today, right now. I have to show them that there's nothing to be scared of. But I can't jump. I said, you're going to have to push me. And she looked at me and she goes, I know. I said, you know. She goes, yeah, we watched your elevator right up. I knew I was going to have to push it. <laughs> Are they watching the fuck? Ah! <laughs> so I go, okay. But by the way, scared ice people, guess what? If they push you, you have to go off backwards. 
you have to see the push. They can't push you in the back, it's against the law. So I turn around, and she starts to walk at me like this. And I was like, are you out of your fucking mind right now? You think I'm gonna let you push me like you're one of the walking dead? Get your shit together. Yeah, we're gonna have to plan this out. Look, man, I grew up with three older brothers, man. A lot of us who grew up with the youngest of a big family, there's some PTSD that's involved with that shit. One of my things is I was scared multiple times every day. So that means if you scare me to this day, I'm gonna jazz hand. <laughs> Not only am I on a jazz hand, it's gonna be followed by this noise. Ah! 100% uh, of the time. 100% of the time, right? I already have fucking tape tape. Ah! I don't want to go with it, you know what I mean? So don't you surprise me off this fucking needle now. Give me a good push. I go, one, two, three, push. You ready? She goes, I'm ready. I go, you ready? She goes, I'm ready. <laughs> and I go, one. And right it was. She just goes, one, like that. <laughs> she was so sick of me being up there, guys. If she was allowed to scream, one, you pussy, one. <laughs> you know, I could tell she was sick of me. When she pushed me, she didn't look at me, guys. When you check the camera, she pushed me when she was already walking back to the office. And in the camera, after she pushed me, she gave me three of these, just like that. Oh, and on my phone, I have a 16 second video. So I get down to the bottom. And uh, the woman who so, so said the video joke comes up and she goes, hey, hey, CEO wants to talk to you, you got a minute. I said, yeah. And he comes up to me, he goes, hey man, Tim. I go, hey, I'm Josh. And he said, first of all, how great was that? I was like, pretty fucking terrible. <laughs> he was like, but you're gonna do it again. I go, no. <laughs> and he goes, are you glad you did it? I said, I'm so glad I did it. And please thank your staff. They were very patient with me. <laughs> and, I, and I was about to walk away. He goes, hey, I just want you to know, me, everybody in the office, we really enjoyed your video. And I was like, all right. <laughs> so, I'm home a month later in the States. And my buddy from New Zealand, Heath, he calls me. And he goes, hey man, I go, hey. He goes, hey, have you, have you been on that New Zealand jump website? <laughs> and I said, no, and he goes, you should. <laughs> And I said, what am I looking for? He goes, you're looking for a video. I go, where is it? He goes, it's right on the front page. <laughs> so I go to the front page and there's a video of the CEO. And at the beginning of the video, he's just giving all the vital information about the 700 feet, 16 second fall, where it is in downtown Auckland, what you can see when you're at the top, all the vital information. And at the very end he goes, but most importantly guys, what you need to know is here at New Zealand Jump, we've had zero fatalities. Here at New Zealand Jump, We've had zero injuries. What you need to know is that New Zealand Jump is 100% and then it just cut to a video of me going, save, 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 save. <laughs> Do you know I went back to New Zealand to have Jacob jump and the guy walked up to me and he was like, you gonna jump again? And I was like, you remember me? He was like, we all remember you. Come on, man. It's so weird the things that I'm scared of and the things I'm not. Like, I would stand on stage naked in front of a crowd. That's not my, uh, my hang-up. But, dude, if, you, if I wouldn't jump off this table I was sitting in front of, if I stood on top of it, I'd be like, this is kind of high. <sighs> I'm sweat. My hands are sweating just thinking about it. And the last story, guys. Look, man, you know me. You know I like to get high. You know I like live music. I like to combine the two of them. But this time, I may have gone a little too far when somebody dared me to do something. This is a cautionary tale. I grew up poor, and uh, my dad was also pretty cheap. And because of that, we mi I missed out on a lot of experiences. And I grew up, man, I'm, 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 I'm bummed that I did this, but I grew up through my 20s and 30s, like if I saw a steak on the menu that was $24, and I saw a chicken that was 17, I'd be like, mm, I should get the chicken, even though I wanted the steak. Do you know what I mean? Like, I fucking hate that my dad put that in my head. So what I've started to do is, listen, guys, it's important not to be willy-nilly with your fucking money, but if you got 100 bucks and it's between saving 100 bucks 
and going to a concert you've always wanted to see, go to that fucking concert. Here's the deal. A year from now, you're not going to have any idea where that $100 went, but you'll remember the concert. So make some fucking memories while you can still make some memories. All right? So, uh, taking that into account, last September, I got to see six bands in one weekend, all on the bucket list. Now, I spent more than I should have on this concert. It was, it was, uh, it was old cello. It was Coachella for old people. Did anybody go? Did you know what I'm talking about? It was the Stones, The Who, McCartney, Neil Young, Roger Waters, and Bob Dylan, all in the same weekend. It was amazing. Has anyone in here ever seen Bob Dylan before? Yeah, he eats a bag of dicks, that motherfucker. He's so bad. Did he play any hits when you saw him? No, one fucking hit! Dude doesn't play one hit! Are you kidding me? And I was so mad, I'm like, play Tango the Blue! And the guy next to me was like, yeah, well, it's Bob Dylan, he's earned the right to play what he wants, and I would agree with you if he's playing in his own fucking living room, but he wasn't. <laughs> there were 90,000 people there who paid a lot of fucking money. Pay Tango up in Blue, you piece of beef jerky, fuck you! <laughs> I will fight Bob Dylan right now. I'll tell you that right now. I'll fight that motherfucker. I think I got a shot at Bob Dylan. I'd like to hit him once just to hear him go, eh. I just, I... <laughs> Just a quick, <laughs> <laughs> But on the way in, right, I told my brothers, I'm like, hey guys, I'm taking mushrooms this weekend. And they were like, which night? I said, did you hear me? This weekend. <laughs> And they were like, why are you gonna, are you, are you, you, you're gonna do that by yourself? And I said, no, there's, there's gonna be 90,000 people there. <laughs> and they were like, you're not, but you don't know any of them. I was like, well, I'm, I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay, so, and by the way, I did it out of respect for the bands we were going to see. I felt like they would want me to be fucked up, right? <laughs> so, but you got a curiosity, round of applause. And I'm assuming this will be a larger round of applause than in most cities. People who have taken mushrooms before. Yeah. Okay. Guys, I was in Huntsville, Alabama last weekend. I asked that question, and one dude goes, I got some on my salad right now. And I was like... <laughs> and not what I'm talking about. Uh... So after Dylan, I was like, I'm taking the mushrooms now. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not putting myself through another disappointing show. Now, at following Dylan was the Stones, and I had never seen the Stones before. And so, uh, and by the way, sitting next to me was this old Hispanic couple. And the dude had those, like the round, tiny glasses, and he had a tiny ponytail, you know, one of these? And it was pulled tight, so dude looked surprised the whole show, like. <laughs> So, and she scratched his back the entire concert. Shh, shh, shh. Two and a half hours. Shh, 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 shh. So about five minutes before the music starts, I get my first little warm hug, and I'm like, ah. I'm like, this is about to be the best night of my fucking life, right? And so the guy next to me, he turns to me and he goes, hey, man. And I go, hey. And he goes, what's your name? I said, Josh. And he said, who do you think the best rock band of all time is, Josh? And listen, guys, I'm about to trip balls, right? <laughs> so the last thing I want to do is have a conversation with the Mexican John Lennon. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm on Pasadena on that right fucking now, right? So I just tell him what I think is going to answer the it, stop most conversation. I said, the Beatles. And he goes, whoa, man. It's the Stones. She and I have seen the Stones 66 times. <laughs> and she said, yeah, and we re-fall in love every show. And I was like, yeah, and I was like, yeah, that's sweet. And I said, that's going to be very cool for me to watch the Stones for the first time next to people who have seen them 66 times. And I'm going to watch them re-fall in love right in front of my face that the belt had melt off my fucking skull. You know what I mean? Like, I felt like telling him, I hope you don't mind watching this concert next to the Ghost Rider because <laughs> I'm not for sure what's going to happen from here on out, you know? <laughs> so, 
I, I and then start in. Dun, 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 and I'm like, oh my God, right? <laughs> I couldn't believe what was happening. Not kidding. 10 minutes in, dude turns to me and he goes, hey man. And I go, hey. And he goes, what's your name? And I was like, <laughs> I said, Josh? And he goes, who do you think the best rock and roll band of all time is, Josh? And for a second I thought, oh my God, these mushrooms are amazing! I was like, this is the most visceral deja vu I've ever had in my entire life! And honestly, I'm gonna tell you, I'm not gonna lie to you, for a second I thought, I can see the fucking future! Like, I know how this conversation ends! Oh, I'm gonna see this concert twice! Fuck yeah! But we did the whole thing 66 times, re fall in love. <laughs> Not kidding. No joke. 12 minutes later, dude turns to me and he goes, Hey, man. And I go, Don't you ask me that fucking question again, dude. And his wife goes to me, You'll have to excuse him. He's done a lot of drugs. He doesn't have any short-term memory. And I was like, well, no wonder you got to see the stone 66 fucking times. And just so you know, you don't re-fall in love. He thinks he bangs some chick at the Stones concert every weekend. Like, not as romantic as you think it is, ma'am. I'm just saying. And then I will tell you what the true privilege of my life being there that weekend was watching a generation of people watch their idols for the last time. Guys, so cool to see. So cool to see because they were partying without inhibition. Look, if we saw a, a bar full of 65-year-old people upstairs getting fucked up, you'd be like, go home. <laughs> yeah, as a, you'd make a group decision. You're like, hey, all of you, you need to go. Right? But this concert was for them. It was for them to come and relive a snapshot of their life. So they partied without inhibition. And it was amazing to see. And because of that, there was a lot of old white guy dance circles popping up all over the place. <laughs> if you haven't seen one of those. And when I say dance circle, there was a lot of two gun salutes, you know, a lot of... <laughs> And you could tell when they liked the song, you know why? The guns went up in the air, right? <laughs> There was one guy near me doing a lot of the pencil. And then near me also, there was a big guy doing kicks like this. And he had to go like 240, big dude. He's kicking, he's like, yeah! And I was like, look at the big guy go! Like, he's killing it! And then big guy just poof, collapses. And I was like, oh no! He, he fucking river danced himself to death. Like, <laughs> And he's not moving. And I'm like, oh, this dude is in fucking trouble, right? So they put it, they come in, EMTs come, they put him on a stretcher, wheel him out, you know? And he's saying his eyes are closed, and one of his friends who's near me leans over and goes, the dude has to be like mid 60s or something. And he's over and he goes, hey man, you're gonna be okay. <laughs> and the guy just opens his eyes and he goes, yeah, I'm just really tired. <laughs> And his friend said, what? He goes, yeah, I got tired from dancing around, so I laid down on the ground. And then the EMT said, yeah, I can't lay here. And I told him, I'm not fucking getting up. I'm too tired. And the EMT said, if you don't get up, sir, we're going to have to wheel you out of here. And I said, that actually sounds kind of nice. Rock and roll! And this is when shit got a little weird. There was about a 280, 290-pound dude running around shirtless doing this to people. <laughs> and I'm watching him and I'm like, oh, I, I really hope he doesn't come over here, you know? Like, <laughs> so he comes over and his belly's all sweaty. So there's like tracers flying off of his stomach. 
and his whole stomach's moving all at once, and I'm like, I'm never looking away. I knew I was gonna get fucking trapped in that thing, right? And then he said something to me that I promise you has never been uttered before in the history of human beings. He shakes his belly at me, and he looks at me, and he goes, hey! I go, what's up? He goes, how many knuckles deep do you think you can go on my belly button? I go, what? He goes, how many knuckles deep? I go, none, none knuckles deep, dude. Zero knuckles deep. And he goes, why not? I was like, well, why would I? And he goes, everybody's doing it. And I go, who? Who the fuck is doing that? And he goes, everybody. Now look, guys, I'm shrooming. You know what I mean? And, and, and I don't want to be the only guy who doesn't finger fuck this dude's belly button. You know what I mean? I don't want to be Debbie Downer. You know what I mean? I want to be part of the group. So I go to him, I go, uh, I go, oh, what finger should I use? And he goes, he goes, I'd use the index. I go, okay. Guys, wait, it gets so much worse. So, I go to lube up my finger, right? And he goes, nah, you won't need lube. And I was like, uh, oh, that's good news for me. <laughs> and it just fucking, with room to spare, right? And I look at him, I go, we got room to spare, big fella. And he goes, okay. And I go to pull my finger out. And you know when you put your finger in one of those Chinese finger locks? <laughs> And for whatever reason, when you try to pull it out, it clamps down on it. I, I couldn't get my finger out of his fucking belly button. I went full palm on this dude's stomach, like, yeah. Cause there's no way I'm going out like that, right? I'm like, Aah. and it just popped out, right? As soon as it pops out, he looks at me and he goes, we finally found somebody to do it! <laughs> Doing that. He goes, who would do that? I go, that's what I fucking said! <laughs> now, let's get into a little truth time. You ready for a little truth time? Truth, truth time. As a man, as a man, as a man, I had to fight every fiber in my body not to smell that finger one fucking time. <laughs> Don't yuck me, you hypocritical motherfucker. You raise your nuts, the first thing you do is smell them. You got a unicorn on your finger. You're never gonna smell that shit again. Now listen, I did it. I did it. I did it. I did not. I did not do it. I did not do it. I did it. I didn't. I gave my brother a dirty Sanchez, and I was like, "Hey, dude, what, what does that smell like?" He walked around the whole day like this. Hey, what was? What, what was that? What, what was that? because that's the type of asshole I am. I will say that as grossed out as I am sometimes thinking about it, how many people can say they stuck their finger straight into the belly button of a stranger and got it stuck in there? But wiping it under my brother's nose really made it all better. You know what I mean? If you see me out on these streets, ask me to smell my finger. It still has a little bit of the on it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had so much fun putting it together. I'm going to put together a bunch more of these compilations because a lot of you have been asking for them. So here they come. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you out on the road. ComedianJoshWolf.com.